guests. There's no way that Joe would get along with all of his guests. However, I believe no one rattled him more than my than this guy. Yiannopoulos. Man, Be an stupid. atheist! No, you Be know an atheist! What, you know, listen, if we're gonna have a conversation, we can't keep talking over each other like this. The conversation got heated when our party animal Milo claimed he was religious. No, no, I, I, I believe. I don't necessarily go to mass all the time, but um, I you do, believe I do, I do what? Believe. I'm a Catholic. So this guy looks demon possessed. I don't know about you guys, but he, yeah, it just looked weird. You I believe in? I call myself a Catholic. Yeah. I so mean, I'm not a good Catholic, but you know. but when you say you believe, like you believe in what? The Bible? Well, I believe in Catholicism. I'm, 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 I'm a Catholic, I think. Joe then pointed out all of the inconsistencies in Milo's lifestyle according to the Bible, to which Milo replied. You can aspire to be better than you are. Um, aspire I, to be better than you are doesn't mean you believe in Jewish zombies. I'm not going to win this one. I'm not going to win this one. Well, of course you're not. This one's <laughs> ridiculous. Even though it felt like Milo had lost the debate, he suddenly decided to put Joe's worldview into question. I feel sorry for people who have a sort of bleak, empty existence of oh, militant that's atheism. Not bleak it's, or just, empty. it's just so boring. No, a lack the terrible of belief way to, in not nonsense is not bleak. Terrible way to look at the world. A lack of belief in nonsense is not bleak. Well, you believe plenty of nonsense. Joe pushed back on the statement, which resulted in Milo demanding that Rogan didn't disrespect other people's religion. Of a guy, clueless. I don't know. Recommended video by a subscriber of mine, but I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't. He's. <laughs> I'm. I'm trying to be polite. Okay, that's why I'm refraining my, myself from all of this. But let's carry on. Don't worry. It's going to carry on where we left about off. About our, um, you know, our, our sympathies, the way we relate to one another, the way that. We, that's adorable. I'm presenting. Reality is, we're talking about myths. It seemed like the discussion was settling down a little until Milo claimed Joe was only mocking Christianity to provoke a reaction. You can disagree with everything that they teach. You can say that it's nonsense. You can agree that it. You can, if you want to, agree that it has bad consequences in society. That well, it's it can from the bad. Past. What you shouldn't do is ridicule and dismiss, you know, sort of the, the you know, Jewish zombie, right? You're just doing it to be outrageous. You're just doing it no, to provoke. No, no, that's what and it what is. you shouldn't do. And look, okay. no, I'm not doing there is it a to good be outrageous. place. There's a good place for, for outrageousness and provocation, right? And I I'm not get trying to put you no. on trial here. What I'm saying is, you're too smart to fall into this habit. And it's a leftist thing. Like, I you made an argument make, for me. I you just didn't. made it for me. You grew up in a place where it's Christianity. You're a good person. Milo followed up his argument with drugs. a statement that quite literally stunned. Joe Rogan. Everywhere that doesn't okay. have a strong Christian heritage is a f bad, bad, with bad morals. That's a ridiculous statement. That's a ridiculous statement. That's Everywhere ridiculous that statement. doesn't have geo, Judeo-Christian <laughs> values. Uh, Plays? I think that, yes, I think I think it, sh it should be perfectly reasonable, respectable thing to say that our culture is better. I believe our culture is better our than culture, everywhere else in the world. But wait, the, the, it's not myths though. A lot of this is proven. You can actually, okay, well, there was a guy that existed here by the name of Christ. I mean, all of our religions are acknowledging it. They're just, oh, he's not the Lord. He's just a prophet. So you could just, you can go back and see so much evidence and proof after proof and proof. So it's a bit irritating when people call, oh, it's myths. It's fairy tale. No, this is not Disney movies. This is biblical is influenced more than you would like to admit by your Judeo-Christian What's it? There is a segment in the debate that I decided to edit out because I didn't think it was appropriate to talk about publicly. So I will be vague now, but let me see if you can read between the lines. Whilst discussing where does morality come from, who is the source of it, Joe Rogan claims that morality did not come from a god, and it certainly didn't come from the Judeo-Christian god. And he uses an example. He says there is a, a forgotten tribe somewhere on the other side of the world and they do unspeakable things to the people in their tribe. Now, I want to say to Joe Rogan or any atheist who brings that argument, because I've heard it many times before, can you live out that statement? You might be able to say that morality is just us in a, in a culture and we come up with our rules and our regulations. However, could you live it out? Could you send your loved ones over to that tribe and be okay with them doing those exact acts on your own? Family. Fair play. I think Fair play. you would not be able to say, in my opinion, morality is relative. In my opinion, I think morality is just cultural, but I prefer if you didn't do that to my loved ones. No, I believe if you ever witnessed such an act, you would be in tears of sadness. You would be in anger. Why? Because we are made in the image human. of God. And God has wired us all up with a soul, with value, to see that human beings are more than atoms bouncing around by accident, finding out their own morality and their own purposes. No, we've been made 
made as precious eternal souls and you and I matter because God has created us. Amen. So valuable are our souls that Jesus Christ purchased them on the cross. This Oof. outer shell, this skin that you see right now, is perishing. One day it will be no more, but the soul Envelope. that lives on inside of us, the person that you are yourself, your soul, will live on and on and on. And Jesus Christ knew that, and he knew how valuable, how precious the soul was. So precious are our souls that he left the glories of heaven, the comfort of heaven, and he came into this world and dwelt amongst us. God Amen. in a skin, God in a flesh, took on a human body and dwelt amongst us and Amen. lived a perfect life. A life that was acceptable to God. Because the reality is, you and I have done wrong things. There are moral absolutes and you and I have broken pretty much all of the Ten Commandments, if we're honest. We have sinned against God and our sins separate us from a holy God. And because of this sin, Jesus Christ knew there was something he had to do. He had to go to the cross, have nails through his hands and his feet and absorb the wrath of God like a sponge so that you and I can be forgiven. Someone had to pay the fine. Someone had to take the rap. Someone had to die in our place so that you and I can be forgiven. And because Christ was the substitute for our sin, now heaven's doors are open. Now the way is open. And if you turn to him, if you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you put on Christ and receive his righteousness, his gift of eternal life, you can be forgiven. If you're Amen. an average Joe like me, can I say Joe Rogan? Logan is also an average Joe. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying that. Christ will die for you. Christ did die for you. Christ loves all people. All people are equal in God's eyes and all souls are just as precious. And that is why Christ Amen. went to the cross for everyone. But not everyone will make it into heaven. Why? Oof. Because not everyone will receive this wonderful gift of salvation. Many will receive it's, And it's not even that not everybody will receive it. It's been given, but not everybody has accepted it. So receiving is one thing, it's like it's been given to you, it's been, it's been delivered at your doorstep, but whether you open the door, in fact, it's been delivered inside your door, because God is in everybody, but you have to welcome him in, he's knocking on your door, you know, so you have to, in, that's the door, comparing it from outside, but let's just take it as a present, it's been delivered in your house, but if you don't open it, if you don't accept the present, what's the point? If I deliver a Ferrari or Lamborghini, let's just go materialistic for a second, and I deliver a Ferrari at your garage, if you never open it, it's just gonna, it's gonna literally stay there until it starts, I don't know, breaking down and it's not working anymore because it hasn't been driven for over 50 years. So you have to accept the gift. That's the wonderful thing is like, he's not forcing anyone. If God really wanted to, he could have forced all of us to be Christians by default. So we all enter heaven. But what would be the point on that? It defeats the whole purpose of free will, right? Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with this. Reject. Many will come up with excuses. Many will throw their arguments, their atheism, all this in God's face. But they will all stand before God. And I'm just mm. praying. I just plead with you. Whoever you are listening right now, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Have your sins forgiven. Know that your grave can be emptied because the one who went to the cross, who died, who gave up his life so we could be forgiven, was put in a tomb, was buried, but on the third day, rose from the dead. And now Oof. we have faith and trust in him that he can raise Amen. us back from the dead when the Lord Jesus Christ comes again. He'll raise Amen. all of us and empty every grave of all those who've trusted in him. Will your grave... Amen. Will your, gra will your grave be risen? Will your body come back to life? After Christ comes back, we all meet at Mount Zion. We're all celebrating. <laughs> we made the right decision. Wouldn't that be crazy for you to obtain the whole world but lose your soul in the process? It makes absolutely no sense. So you, my friends, what I want you to do is go finish this on the YouTube channel of Off The Curb Ministries because this is an absolutely awesome video. And if you're a Christian, if you're genuinely, genuinely serious about entrepreneurship and you want to become a Christian entrepreneur just like I am, then, in fact, I'll just show you. I have this video for you guys. Guys, this video isn't sponsored by anybody, but for a long time now, I've been running my other YouTube channels and showing people how to grow on YouTube and actually make money on YouTube. So I thought I'll bring it to my Christian channel as well to show you guys as proof. Let me refresh the page right there. It's refreshing. And as you can see, this month alone, we've been able to bring in £1,598 in 
dollars is probably 1800 and something i believe if you are interested link is somewhere in the description down below by all means you don't have to but i thought hey christians need to make money too and now with the transparency out of the way let's get back into the video and your grave be emptied on that so day I that's hope so. that's and it so will your grave be emptied as i was saying let's yeah let's hope you resurrect and you believe and trust in god and you give it give it all so link in is in the description if you want to go ahead and join what i just showed you and told you guys right there link is in the description down below but if not recommend talk in the comment section down below what did you think about this video joe rogan is he going to turn into a christian because some people are saying it seems like he might do let me know in the comment section down below as well check out this awesome video you're seeing coming up there and i'll catch you guys on the next